Awesome. Hey, Tammy, it's really good to be here with you. How are you? Oh, Sylvia, I am doing great. When dreams are coming true, right? How else can you be? Uh -huh. Awesome. And what's the big dream that's coming through for you now? I have a, I have a feeling that's what you're <laughs> referring to. What's the big right? dream? <laughs> um, my dream is Jack's dreams of heaven. So it's just dreams building upon dreams and launching my children's book and getting it out into the world mm. now through all of the internet channels that we can go through. This is awesome. And I am feeling so excited for you, really, because I also believe that this book, when it gets into the hands of children all across the world, is going to make such a difference. So tell us, Tammy, what is the title of your book and what inspired you to write it? So the title of my book is Jack's Dreams of Heaven, as you can see. And the reason I decided to write it, well, it started out not that way. <laughs> it actually started out as we, Jax was a new puppy that we had and he was, did some naughty things. And my family thought it was hilarious. A family that didn't live with us. <laughs> and they're always like, you need to write a book. And so I had write down these little antics that he did. Like we had a four foot wall and he like jumped it and then we mm -hmm. built it up to six foot and he's jumping that. And, and so just funny things that happen. He chewed up the family Bible <laughs> like <laughs> this were happening. And uh, so I would write these antics down that Jax was doing. And then things kind of took a turn in our mm -hmm. lives. And we had a family member who um, became ill and a long illness. And then when they passed away, that's when my book kind of flipped a little bit. Mm. And instead of writing the funny antics of Jax and all the friends that you meet inside the book, Betsy the Bassett, Ham, Fluffy Buffy, and Lucky the Lab, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's like, there's a way to bring joy amongst grief. Mm -hmm. And Jax Dreams of Heaven does that while also showing people that there's a way to hope mm -hmm. when maybe um, hope doesn't feel possible at the moment. And so that's, that's why I wrote the book and why I'm very excited to get this out into the hands of people that just love a good story, love mm -hmm. stories about dogs, um, and or love stories about heaven, guardian mm -hmm. angels, but also about hope. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to do in the end my hope is that people experience hope because of the book. Yeah, that it's, I mean, when you started talking about Jack, I was expecting getting this, you know, about this puppy that is playing all these antics and carrying on and then the switch, right? And I think the switch that I felt is a switch that also happens in our lives from time to time when we're not expecting them, or even if we're expecting it, we don't know what it is going to feel like. Right. And yeah. and you can't, right? And That's in right. the story, Jack's friends come along beside him um, mm -hmm. as he looks for grandma in heaven. Mm -hmm. And it also brings forth that light of who are those friends in our lives that were like, hey, can you help me find grandma in heaven? And they're yes. like, I'm there. I mean, in lucky's case it's wolf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but those friends are so important to us and finding those friends that help us find hope yes and and sometimes it is during the hard places of our lives that we recognize who we really have as friends and how they can come along and help us so I see you know I'm really seeing how this book about a puppy and heaven really relates to not only children, but adults, I, I think also, right? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I found it interesting, the people that ask me to send the book to somebody almost as like a sympathy card. And so I've sent several of those and I was visiting with my sister last night who she was one of those. Mm -hmm. And she said that it just made such a difference in a grown woman's life mm -hmm. that had lost her husband. And I think the other part about this is 
because my daughter, um, who's like 30, she's a teacher. Yes. She had a teacher friend whose mom had passed away and unexpectedly around 50 years old, just really not. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. gave her the book and the friend talked tremendously about the amount of tears she had during the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mm-hmm. best friend from childhood lost her mom during this time. Mm-hmm. And of course she said she read the book and again, and it helps people just get those tears out. Yes. And some people laugh during the book. Some people cry during the book. Yeah. It's been a really interesting, different reaction depending on where they're at in life. And and it sounds to me like regardless of where you're at, this book helps to bring out your humanity, right? Yes. yes. Because even when we are really sad about losing a loved one, there are still moments when we want to laugh. And we don't always want to feel like, oh, I have to be sad because I've lost this one. I can still be sad and be laughing about something else at the same time because, you know, we we have all kinds of emotions that are present with us at Absolutely. any given moment. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. As you say that, I'm going to grab this book. Yes. And in the back, um, on the very last page, Sylvia, there is a whole list about how to go through the grief cycle with children. Awesome. And as you talk about that idea that we don't always want to feel sad, Mm -hmm. um, I want to read this one um, uh, sentence, it looks like to me. Maybe a paragraph. Yes. It says, as the child expresses their sadness and anger, their joys and emptiness, be there to comfort them and listen without trying to take away, compare to your own feelings or solve their feelings just listen just listen yeah and I think part of the joy Mm -hmm. um, that we get to experience when we do live um lose a loved one is the stories we never knew about them yeah as like as we gather with family and yes find out that maybe you know if it's a dog that has passed away or a family pet it's like wait they slept on your bed I said, they, I always thought they went to their kennel at night, yes. <laughs> you know, and then yes. the stories come out and then this kind of joy happens by this yes. exchange of stories. And, um, so when we do get experienced joy during that grief cycle, part yeah. of that is those stories we get to share with yeah. the loved one that has gone. Yes. And it's very important. It, it really is. We don't, we don't always have to be sad you know, well, honoring our sadness and and just disregarding the feelings of joy because we're feeling like, oh, somebody might think that I am not missing this person or I didn't love them enough. So I'm, yeah. The thing I also like about, it sounds like, you know, about this book is it being used as a card to cheer someone up, mm-hmm. right? You, you Somebody might think, well, it's a children's book. It is supposed to be in a certain category in terms of age age range. What age range would you say this book goes into? Um, that's interesting you say that because officially, like if you go on Amazon, it's like ages four to eight, right? Yes. And when I went into Read Across America Week last week into a school and made a little <laughs> postcard so they could find my book, I said ages four to 104. <laughs> Good for you. I like that. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but I find children's books throughout my whole life that help me through a situation, see it differently. And I hope that's what this book is. It's it's a lifetime book yes. of when we need that pick me up or we're looking for that sign of hope. We can go back and read it and, and be reminded because not only is it a great story about the dogs that go to, to heaven mm-hmm. um, or dream that they're in heaven but also um in my books because there's more jack's books coming out there's Good. always going to be a butterfly uh-huh. and so there which is a sign of hope for many people mm-hmm. and the illustrator when we were talking about this she said that her mom always said look for the ladybugs in a book and so she puts a ladybug in the book so i hope that when people open it up or read it online, however they read their children's books, yes. that they also look for signs of hope. Yes. And the ladybug is right there with the butterfly. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and people will find that um, the cardinal is a big sign of hope mm. in the book. 
which wasn't originally in there. Huh. And I ended up, we were sitting out on our back deck and I was telling my husband, I had been through two big edits on the book. Uh -huh. and I said, the ending's just not right. Like it's not right. And this Cardinal kept visiting. Like each night I go on the back deck in the summer and <laughs> They're like, like, this is due tomorrow. <laughs> I have, to have this done. And this cardinal came in again, right? And wow. I go, the cardinal. It's supposed to be the cardinal. So I ended up having to go back because yes. of the foreshadowing that needed to happen in the book and That's put true. the cardinal in a couple scenes to get to the point that the cardinal is a sign of hope that Jack finds. That's awesome. That That is awesome. Yeah. So... The message, um, and, I, and I think we've been touching on the message as we've been talking, but if somebody was asking and they wanted to hear that, what, what is the message? What is the main message of the book? Uh, I'm going to go back to hope. And I'm going to read the book description because it ends with that idea. Okay, yes. And it says, hi, I'm Jax, a doggy who loves adventures, bacon, and salmon. I love my family most of all, but when grandpa shows up to visit without grandma by his side, I can't help but wonder, where's grandma? Mm. I hear grandma has gone to heaven. Ever heard of heaven? Me neither. This is the story of a dream I had about visiting heaven. Join me and my friends on this adventure of finding hope. I like that. I like that. And what would you say to someone who um, says, I don't, you know, I, I don't believe in heaven, but I like dogs and I, and I wonder if this book would be helpful for my child or my loved one who is, you know, missing a loved one who has passed on. Would you, would you offer this book? Do you think they could find something in this book? Absolutely. Yeah. So when, um, and I, for whatever reason, I mean, I'm Christian by faith and um, you'll just notice that talking to me and the way I talk and where I speak at. <laughs> However, what I know is that there's a lot of people that don't believe that end up crossing paths with me. Mm -hmm. And I must be decent about answering questions about heaven and God and Jesus and the things that they either didn't grow up with or for whatever reason don't believe in anymore. Yeah. And what I know is there's things that I don't believe in. Um, like I don't believe in unicorns, but I still enjoy reading unicorn books to my granddaughter because that's yeah. what she enjoys. Mm -hmm. And that would be my invitation is yes. for people to sit down and find the different themes throughout the book on friendship and hope and grief and finding joy in life yes. and, and use that to help them through their cycle that they might be going through. Absolutely. I like that because all of those things, regardless of what our faith or no faith is, we experience all of those human conditions. And that's why I asked the question because, you know, sometimes someone might listen to this. It's, it's about Jack and it's about heaven. They might think, Oh, that's, that's all that there is in this book. But really the book is about our humanity. Right, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I went into a third grade classroom and for that classroom visit, we look for themes. Mm -hmm. And I had three main themes that I thought they would pick up on. And they came out with eight themes in the book. And I'm like, I had never thought about that. I hadn't thought about that or that or that or that either. Wow. Yes. And so I think that depending on what a person's looking for in life, their yes. experience in life and who they're enjoying the book with will depend on what themes they decide to take. Exactly. With. And the thing about children is that because they are a lot more open mm -hmm. than than adults are they'll see a lot more there's a lot there are a lot more of possibilities in their world than ours you know <laughs> right well they the third graders were much wiser <laughs> than what i was <laughs> they saw more than the author did yes <laughs> that's so funny yeah. that's funny so yeah. sylvia i want to ask you quick i yeah. mentioned the signs of hope yes. that i mentioned in the book the ladybug and the butterfly and the cardinal um mm -hmm. what are there typical signs of hope in your life? 
that you Absolutely. look for? Absolutely. Like, you know, for me, I think about the fact that every morning that I get up, I can expect that the sun is shining. Mm. Even if I can't see it, I know that it is there. Otherwise, morning wouldn't come. I mean, it's a simple one, you know, but it is, but it is also, I think, quite profound because it is always there. That's how morning comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How neat. <laughs> oh, just beautiful. <laughs> And there's there's the sun right on the top of the book. <laughs> ah, I didn't notice that. Yes, I know. My, my glasses are getting so foggy on me here. Oh. Yeah, I as, yes, I see, I see it, I see it now. As we um, that just reminded me. I grabbed these out. My illustrator sent me all the original paintings. And one thing that is just Thanks. beautiful about this is when she first did this. Um, it was really important for me for these gates to be golden, which mm -hmm. has to do with a vision I had several years ago. But so they were kind of a yellow, like the sun. And she just did an amazing job and definitely wanted my vision to come alive right in the book. That's and great. so she ended up um, ordering gold paint. And I'm not talking like the color gold, like my gold. rings made of gold paint. And so all of the gates of heaven, that's how she got that um, color contrast from the sun was by using true gold. Yes. So I just think that is really cool. That is cool. And she is generous, mm -hmm. really generous of spirit. Yes. Yes, she yes. is. I love that. I really love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so when is this book coming out? You, you're, you're telling us about it and we're getting excited about it. When is it going to be available? March 9th, please go on Amazon or Amazon Canada and purchase Jack Streams of Heaven. It um that's our that's our big day. I'll show you my vision board, Sylvia. Yes. Do you make vision boards? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so my vision board has mm -hmm. best selling children's book author. Yes. And so it's happening. I'm asking um, all of you to go to Amazon on that day and help me become um, in the top 100 of all the children's books that are being sold that day and become a best-selling author. Yes. So, and yes. Then you can see my next book down here. It's, it is definitely possible. I can't see what it says because the color is a little... Right. It says mm -hmm. Jack finds his talent. And so yes. just this week, I signed up back on with Miriam Laundry. Um, publishing to uh, get Jack's finds his talent out this year. You too. are on a roll. I am on a roll. I just, <laughs> I'm so excited. I just, I know the difference that this book makes in people's lives. Yes. And so I'm ready. And one thing that I do is I go in and substitute teach for like a half day, a couple times a month, mm -hmm. because I want to stay in tune with where children are. Yes. So if they'll let me substitute during reading, that's really my preference. <laughs> and when I was in second grade doing a substitute um, teaching day, yes, the children were asking about my book. And so we talked about it and they're like, are you writing another one? I said, yes, it's called Jack's Finds His Talent. And all the yeah. hands go like this. Uh -huh. I'm like, uh, what's going on? <laughs> and then I look at the one and he wants to tell me his talent. And I go, do all of you want to tell me your talent? Or they're all like, yes. Yes. And I'm they like, oh, to Tammy, you have to get on top of this book and get this done. And so I told them, I'm like, when we go out to recess, which is like two hours later, yes. you, can, you can tell me during recess. So I go sit down on the bench and um, all of a sudden the kids aren't going to the playground. They're lining up and time enough time has passed. I forgot what happened. Yes. And I go, did you guys like, why are you lining up? Why are you playing? And the little boy goes, I'm going to tell you my talent. And I'm like, are all of you here to tell me your talent? <laughs> go like this again. So we had to hurry up and do a running no like three high fives with every talent that they told me. No recess. No recess, right? It's like, we just don't tell the substitute teacher yes. about our talent. Yes. And so I'm really excited because the um, front of this Jack's book 
has a page here where it shares that, you know, I shared my imagination of what heaven is mm. like, share mm -hmm. yours. And it's at the beginning for a reason, because I don't want them to lose that childlike insight. Yes. And the next book will have, what's your talent at the beginning. Uh, and we know that if a young person has a spark in life that they follow, mm -hmm. whether um, it's a talent or a career option. So yeah. this last page will focus on how do you keep that spark alive from second grade to 12th grade and that's awesome that young person stay on that path. So that'll be some common themes that you'll find in the Jack series. That that I, I really like that. And that's why also I don't think it is important to put it in a certain age category, you know, children's books category, because this book can travel with you, <laughs> grow with you as you're growing is what it seems like to me. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So. And, and about how much is the book going to be sold for? Um. So I'm talking in American dollars. And yes. so it's $8 for the ebook or $12 for the printed um, copy book. Yes. And we can find it on Amazon. And you can find it on Amazon. And my illustrator sent me a message that she sees that Barnes and Noble is picking it up too. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so that was an exciting time. Awesome, awesome. And is this your is is Jack's dream of heaven your first book? Um, it's officially my first book, my Fisher. first published book. Uh -huh. uh, years ago, I worked in special education. And there was a young boy, this was like my, I would say really my first book. Mm -hmm. And there was a boy that had Down syndrome and he was nonverbal mm -hmm. and he had went to a place we call Exarbon here and it's a rodeo okay. and he got to meet Cowboy Ted and his mom took pictures. And when he came back, I was going to college at the time for special mm -hmm. ed. And when he came back, I took the pictures and I wrote him a book about his experience with cowboy ted just mm -hmm. like three words per um page, page. Uh -huh. and he was able to track and became interested in reading and he's that was the first book he ever read mm. was the cowboy ted and it was simply like on poster board right <laughs> with yes. pictures of his mom and me putting words below yes so mm -hmm. that was the first one and then a year ago um from right now i had lost my voice for 43 days huh. and when I was about 10 days into, uh, or I was, um, sorry about that. I was about yeah. three or four days into, um, isolation cause I had COVID okay. and then I was about that same time into losing my voice and my grandchildren and my daughter and son-in-law were living with us at the time. And the one and three-year-old couldn't understand why I wouldn't hug them, why I wouldn't be in the same room with them. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't tell them I had no voice. Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> and so one day, um, we have a sliding glass door going out to our enclosed front porch, and that's where I isolated so I could be at the sun. Uh -huh. And the one-year-old got the sliding glass door open, and I can't touch her. I can't say anything. So I'm like backing up, and I start ringing the doorbell, and it's like literally cold January here in the help help somebody <laughs> right. And yeah. and that's all I could do. And so her mom, you know, runs upstairs, hears the doorbell ringing, frantically grabs the child and takes her back out, shuts the isolation room door. And I was so frustrated. Mm -hmm. and so I sat down and in two hours, I wrote a children's book about Gammy lost her talk Ooh. and nobody was upstairs at the time. So, and I printed off and I just took pictures that I had with me and the children put a bandaid over my throat. And so I guess I illustrated a book technically then. <laughs> yes, you did. And I uh, sat it on the couch and I text my husband. I'm like, please grab the grandkids and read them a book now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of being frustrated at that thinking. But it was just so sweet after he read the book to him. And my mm -hmm. grandson, who was three at the time, comes up to the sliding glass door and he goes, Cammy, owie. Oh. Pray for you. <laughs> they get it. They know I love them. They know yes. they have to wash their hands. Yes. But the book so, did it. The book did it. And that's also what put me on this journey too. 
make sure that I had um, Jack's Dreams of Heaven out before my grandson's fourth birthday, mm. since it was targeted. And that's my dream now is to have the series done while my grandchildren are at an age that they'll be able to read them and enjoy them at that yes. level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, the books have a way of of explaining things that we can't just do even you know even if you didn't lose your voice but notice how because you probably wouldn't have said it in those words Mm -hmm. if you were trying to explain it or to tell somebody about it but because now you're thinking of how do I say it in a way that children will get it Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful I had taken um, the master class through our publishing company And that really helped me be able to hone in on those skills. So I could produce, you know, an eight page booklet in two hours because I understood the dialogue that needs to happen between characters and and how a child thinks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And which publishing company are you talking about? Uh, Miriam Wandry. And and Sylvia, you're publishing through the same company coming (laughs) up here too, which is exciting to be on this journey with you Inside, so yeah. yes through the master class and then taking the publishing mm-hmm. mastermind group which is how I met you and now I'm signed up for the pro to do my second book wow. so and with that I want to know um you're doing this for me today and I can't wait to do it for you in the future okay. so what when I interview you what book will I be interviewing you about <laughs> you'll be interviewing me about Grace's lunch and the I just got the 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 illustrations back early this morning, and I sent them off to the book designer. And I am it's been a wonderful day. <laughs> oh, I oh, I remember those days of the illustrations started coming in. Oh, I'm so excited yes, for you. Yes, yes. But what is this, what is it like for you as you are? you know, you're watching your book come to life. There is something, of course, you you have this idea in your heart. I usually say my ideas are in my heart. The ones I act on are in my heart. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the idea is in your heart. And then you decide, okay, I'm going to put it on paper. What what has it been like for you as you watch it come to life? This roller coaster, (laughs) right? (laughs) It's this roller coaster of, getting that idea down and thinking it's pretty good yes and then the ooh, that's not right and yes. i have a thousand too many words for a children's book yeah and and then rewriting you know and then i go mm-hmm. back up and i'm like oh that's a really good page like yes. you nailed that one tammy <laughs> um and so it's been this roller coaster of great joy and yes. you know there's definitely some plateaus there where you're just typing away, editing, getting it done, Mm -hmm. and then you nail it. And you're like, oh, that was meant to be. Yes. This this is my nail it that I didn't know about. And my husband, the first time I read the book, went with me. And there's this page in here where Jax gives grandpa the evil eye. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And so what's funny about this is at this point, like everybody goes quiet. And so this is on page nine. Mm-hmm. And then we meet Fluffy Buffy on page 17. Mm-hmm. And Fluffy Buffy starts the page by going, Arf! and everybody jumped. <laughs> you could have heard a pen drop until then. So he brought that to my attention the first time I read it. So then the next time I was watching to see if it would happen, and it does. And then oh. I read it in the library, and it happened again. And so I'm like, I don't know that I could have purposely done that. That's right. But it's a great feeling to watch that moment come alive. And now that I know it's going to come. Yes. Even better. (laughs) You're expecting it. You're expecting it. Like when I get to that page, I don't want adults like sitting by the door talking or anything. Because I'm like, no, No. you don't understand. We're going to be able to hear a pin drop for the next eight pages. No interruptions here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think the book takes on a life of its own. Right? Yes. Because yes, because because the book also has its own spirit. 
that is present. And as you are reading, it is, you know, we're being used as instruments for this, for this book, but the book has its own life and it's, and it's manifesting that as you engage with different audiences and, and as you read it, and you have given so much reverence to this book in, in, in stewarding it and giving birth to it, you know, and bringing it to life, um, because you know how it's going to change lives. You know that it is going to change lives. Right. Yeah. Yes. Because it's from the heart, like you said. Exactly. It's, it's a work of the heart, definitely a work of the heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've seen your, your commitment to it, your passion for this over the months that I've known you now and have been hearing about this book. And so I know it's going to be an amazing book. And yes, you are becoming a best-selling author with this book. It deserves that. You deserve that too. No, oh, thank you, yeah. Sylvia, so much. And thank you for the interview today and helping spread the word about Jack's Dreams of Heaven. You're welcome. Remind us of when is the launch date because sometimes we forget quickly. When's March, the launch March 9th, <laughs> Thursday, March 9th. Thursday, March 9th, which is only what, three days from today? Yep. That's right, coming out pretty soon. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it. Great. Thanks again. Thank you. Yes, this is wonderful.